Aloha and welcome to Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We're a show that broadcasts live every Thursday from 2 to 2.30 at the ThinkTech Studios in beautiful downtown Honolulu. We've got beautiful weather today, bog coming in this weekend, so if you're going to visit, visit it next week. Uh, today is going to be a very interesting show. Uh, we do highlight uh, successful companies and individuals and, and how they make it uh, in Hawaii despite the challenges. Uh, but we also bring on people that can talk a little bit about some of the issues and some of the challenges that business have and, and try to get a better understanding of what the issues are so that the business people can be more informed. Today is one of those days where we've got two individuals coming in and we're going to be talking about workers' compensation. Uh, I've got Dr. Scott McCaffrey. Uh, who has got a very long resume, and I'll let him address that. And then we also have um, an attorney, uh, Matt Matsunaga, who also used to be a former state senator and has a lot of knowledge in the legislative side of workers' comp. So both of them are going to be sharing their wisdom and their knowledge with us today and hopefully answering all those questions about workers' comp. But let me start out with uh, Dr. Scott. Uh, you've been involved in workers' comp. Can you give us a little background uh, of yourself? Well, yeah, you, uh, Reg, thank you first for having me on the show and Matt as well. I, uh, my resume isn't really that long. I'm kind of just a, a working class doctor who has uh, now in almost my 40th year in my career uh, taking care of people. And I specialized in, in trauma early on as an emergency doctor, did mm -hmm. that for about 20 years. And then I opened a follow-up clinic for injuries of all types, uh, of course, in the day-to-day -day life uh, on the planet Earth, most adults get hurt at work because that's where they are most active. Mm. So our patient uh, panel right now is about 40% work comp, wow. about 20% auto injury, and the rest sports injuries. And of course, people get hurt around the house sometimes. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've, we've uh, been at this for quite a while. I was former chief of Ahmed at Kaiser and helped set their uh, system up back in the 80s, way back in the day but have spent the last 26 years out at what was St. Francis West, is now the new Queens West, beautiful campus out in West Oahu, and have been there for 26 years taking care of people injured. Well, well that's still a pretty impressive resume. You've been helping a lot of people over not the years. Not my first rodeo. So, yeah. Yeah, no, that's very good. Uh, and, and I'm surprised, 40% of your practice is workers' comp. Yes, that's, well, that's how it breaks down for adults that get hurt. That's... um. That's got to be one of the biggest percentages of any practice in Hawaii, is it? Um, I don't know about that. Uh, there are uh, other injury-oriented clinics, uh, several around. Of course, Kaiser, uh, the, the program that I set up, has, I think, eight, eight to ten doctors. Mm. So they see a lot of folks, uh, m mostly or usually those that are also associated with the Kaiser Health Plan. Okay. And uh, that's basically what we're doing. It doesn't matter uh, really, of course, where you work, if you get hurt, because Work comp insurance is a separate insurance entity. Uh, you can go anywhere you want in this state, at least for the first doctor. After that, you have to get permission to change doctors right. after your first change. Well, and that's some of the details that I'm hoping we can get into a little bit later. But Matt, tell me a little bit about yourself. You've been around for a while as well. Well, first of all, thank you very much, Reg, for having me on the show, and thank you for the wonderful lunch um, beforehand. Dr. Mm -hmm. Scott, you missed out on. I'm hungry. <laughs> well, no, no. I got a doggy bag. Oh, thank so, you. Uh, I got involved in workers' comp uh, from a legislative standpoint maybe about five years ago mm -hmm. when one of my clients asked me to help them sort of navigate some of the workers' comp bills that were going through the ledge. And uh, through that, I began to see some of the problems in the system. And I got the privilege of working closely with uh, Dr. Scotty and, and other uh, really um, compassionate-minded physicians whose single purpose is to get the injured worker back to work, mm -hmm, treat mm -hmm. them and give them their job, give them their dignity back. And so that's how I've been involved. Very good. And it's, I guess you, you mentioned some of the challenges. I mean, there, there's challenges in the system. Uh, is that, uh, I guess, something that yeah, you so can let, talk about? Yeah, so let's go back to the start of Workers' Comp. Workers' Comp in Hawaii was actually set up in 1915 even before Dr. Scotty began his practice. Wow. A little before my time. A little before yeah. your time. Not much, but a little. And so the that, 1915, that's but, even before statehood. That is, yes. Wow. Yes. And the concept was basically that you don't want every injured worker to sue their employer, mm. right? So instead, what you do is, hey, you got to give up the right to sue, but in exchange... For, for unsafe work practice, for an unsafe work environment. That right, was usually right. what they sued. Thank you, yeah. yeah. But in exchange, 
we're going to give you um, medical coverage. We'll take care of your injuries and uh, a set um, compensation amount. Mm -hmm. So that was the concept. And there's going to be a presumption that if you're injured, that it's presumed that you did it while at work, right? So that was the concept. But unfortunately, what has turned into what is what was supposed to be more of a non-litigious nature and a non-litigious way of solving the problems has turned very litigious. Mm -hmm. And uh, just outside, we were talking to one of the staff members who was involved in a workers' comp system, how he had to get his attorney involved against the um, employer's attorney. And unfortunately, that's where the system is going wrong. Right. And I think part of the, the problem that maybe leads to this litigious environment uh, is that the, the way they go about setting the workers' comp rates and, and with experience, and, and is, is that how that works? Is that one of the, the processes? I, you know, I'm not sure if that's so much the, the, the key issue. Um, for me, the key issues are, one is don't drive the doctors out of the system. Mm -hmm. That's like driving teachers out of the educational system. Right. You need the doctors, Absolutely. number one. Number two is make the process reasonably fair. You know, so the worker has a one-stop shop, doesn't have to drive 60 miles to go to uh, Long's or CVS to fill the prescription, makes, makes the, make the examination process as fair and as transparent as possible. And number three, let's pass on to the employers the savings that are resulting um, from the system and make sure it doesn't all go to the insurance companies for administrative costs and for profits. Give it back to the small businesses. Well, and you were showing me something at lunch that was really amazing. Was it the uh, the amount of, of savings that has happened over the years? Yeah, it, it's crazy. From 94 to 2006, the amount of compensation costs paid by the workers' comp insurance companies went from $243 million down to $109 million. And yet the employer premiums only dropped from $362 million to $356 million. So they had over $100 million in savings, uh, but no real reduction in premiums. Exactly. And, and that's got to change. Yeah. Well, I, I basically agree with that, but if I could speak on behalf of insurers Please. for a moment. Um, there was a time in our history, back to the territorial days, and, and all the way up until about 1990, uh, which is about the time that we started the WorkStar Injury Recovery Center and doctors began kind of specializing and focusing on work comp. Up until that time, premiums were going up and up. Mm -hmm. uh, costs were going up and up. And during that pre-period, pre-1990 period, there was a fair amount of cheating and fraudulent behavior mm -hmm. by, by some injured workers and, you know, using the system, working the system, whatever you want to call it. So, you know, it only, it only takes a few bad apples to ruin the barrel. Uh, that, that caused a significant reaction then in the payers and the employer community to try to do something about it. Uh, as often happens, however, uh, there was a bit of an overshoot in 1995 where they cut they, they, uh, through a thing called the Hoku Alliance. For those of you who went back to that era, uh, the, the Hoku Alliance uh, uh, funded and, and moved by insurers, and I believe the Chamber of Commerce was also a big push on this. And they cut uh, doctors' fees over almost 50 percent, 52 percent, and only gave six, uh, six weeks' notice to do it by the end of the session. So it was a, it was really quite draconian, and in my opinion, the pendulum swung way too far, as often happens when you know things are people are trying to correct things that look a little out of control. But what that did effectively is drive out about 70 to 80 percent of the doctors that were taking care of injured workers. They, it, it drove them out because they could no longer afford to take care of the injured worker. The, uh, injured workers are quite labor intensive. They're, it, we're, still, we're still in a paper system, by the way, and it is the 21st century. Uh, but you know, this is, these are heralding back to its roots and so forth. It still runs on paper, very inefficient. And because of the cost control efforts that were uh, pro probably uh, justified to some extent uh, way back, when there were a lot of cheaters, uh, now we've got a, a situation where attorneys, where there's, there continues to be a lot of suspicion regarding injured workers. There's suspicion regarding doctors that are taking care of them as well. And it has caused, uh, in, in my opinion, and I, I see this every day, an over, an over response and, and a hyper effort at downward cost pressure 
and, and an assumption that there are still a lot of workers out there just cheating. Uh, I don't see it. But because doctors have specialized, we have specialty clinics such as mine, we are, I tell you, we're like eagles. We're like hawks looking after and looking out for anyone who might be fraudulent mm -hmm. and might be playing game. We uh, aggressively promote light duty, which is a wonderful win-win. Uh, it cuts down on the lost time for the insurers. It also keeps the patient busy psychologically so they're not sitting home with their injury and pain. And it's, a, it's, it's just a, it's a wonderful thing. I wish more employers participated in light duty because it helps us really keep our costs down. Do they have and uh, things, are, things have really, really mended a lot and to a point where we have shown a lot of efficiencies to the point that, that employer premiums for work comp over the last two decades have basically slid down and down, unlike the rest of insurance in healthcare, mm -hmm. HMAA, HMSA, and so forth. Those premiums keep going up and up. So I, mm -hmm. I want to give a, a shout to all of the people that work in work comp, uh, the, the ones doing the heavy lifting on the front line, the doctors, the therapists, uh, uh, chiropractors and so forth. Uh, we're, I think everyone's kind of gotten on board. We're now we're trying to bring the payers and the employers on board to give each other a congratulation and to work on more efficiencies to make this the best program in the United States. Are we close to that? <sighs> uh, not, very, not, not as close as I would like to see. Uh, you know, I've been, I've been trying to help and trying to move toward uh, efficiency reform for uh, almost two decades. Uh, we, we've raised awareness, hence us sitting here able to discuss these issues right now. Uh, but I would, I, I am always calling out for more cooperation, for less actions by any parties that encourage, uh, no offense to attorneys, Matt, but that, that, that do not encourage uh, attorneys to have to get involved. Uh, what I find is these days that uh, patients do not reach out for attorney help unless they feel threatened mm -hmm. or under attack in some way, either through a denial of their care uh, forcing the patient to go to an insurance doctor. Uh, they call them independent medical evaluators, but many are not. They're, they're quite biased against the patient and leaning heavily on the side of controlling and cutting costs. And these kind of behaviors are actually paradoxically costing more money than they are, by far than they are saving. So these are the kind of things. We're trying to take the conflict out of this system because, and of course we're in the land of aloha here, to work together cooperatively in the same canoe, paddling in the same direction, only makes sense and it's a way that we can we can really, I think, take the take the work comp system to the next level. Well, it sounds like we're at least talking about it and hopefully moving in the right direction. But we do need to take a, a break here for a second. Um, we're going to pick up this conversation. I want to loop back uh, and talk a little bit about that light duty you mentioned. Um, I want to get a better feel for what that means. Uh, but. This is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. Uh, we're here today talking about workers' comp and, and trying to make sure that everybody uh, has a clear understanding of what that is and what the issues are. So we're going to take a break. We'll be right back in about 60 seconds. Aloha, I'm Dave Stevens, the host of the Cyber Underground on Think Tech Hawaii. This is my co-host, Andrew Lanning, the oh, security hi, guy. <laughs> uh, every week at 5 p.m., we'll be discussing cybersecurity the things to look out for, and the things to do to keep yourself safe. Check us out on Think Tech Hawaii, 5 o'clock Fridays. Thank you. Hi, I'm Marianne Sasaki. We just completed another great episode of Life in the Law, and I'm here today with Jay Fidel. Hi, Jay. Hi, Marianne. And what do we love about the law, Jay? There's so much to love about it, right? There's more to love about it all the time. Uh, no kidding. <laughs> we have to be a nation of laws. We have to be a nation of laws, and we have to be a diligent nation of law, of law, law lawyers and citizens. It's all about the rule of law, Mary. Yes. The rule of law is alive and well and life in the law. Yes, it, yes, it certainly is. Tune in every Wednesday from 1 to 1.30 on Think Tech. Aloha, and welcome back to Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. Today we're having a, a very uh, passionate discussion on workers' comp and how important that is here in Hawaii uh, for both the employers and for the employees. Uh, and we were just talking a little bit about some of the nuances of workers' comp itself, and you mentioned light duty, and it caught my attention. It sounded almost as if the companies had the option to participate in light duty or not. Am I understanding that correctly? Well, they do. You know, they, they buy a premium uh, or, or a policy with a work comp uh, insurance carrier that doesn't, uh, I've never seen one anyway, that mandates that they offer light duty or a certain amount or a certain number of positions. They're always encouraged by the insurance carrier 
because it's a marvelous way to contain cost. Um, I, as a doctor, uh, bound to my Hippocratic Oath, I don't think of, of cost as my number one mission. My number one uh, mission is to get that person better as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. and, and as we were talking about break, the, 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 the foundation of that, of course, is early accurate diagnosis of the problem. The advent of 3.0 Tesla MRI scanning has revolutionized my field of medicine. Uh, we can look into the body better than Superman, and it's kind of <laughs> like Star Trek, really, anymore. Uh, boy, if you've got a, a problem that still bothers a person after just a few weeks, uh, we, uh, once we scan them, we can almost always identify the, the root of that problem. Now, we can't always uh, cure it. For instance, an injured disc, a ruptured disc, or a tear in, in the disc, which is one of the, that's, you know, the central uh, weight-supporting column of the body is the spine. Uh, those are those are significant injuries, especially here in our islands, to uh, folks that are in the trades and construction trades, which is, by the way, where most of the serious injuries happen. Mm -hmm. People that are lifting and and bending and stooping and twisting and so forth. Uh, in the construction trades, we have a, a, a injury rate of uh, pushing 20% wow. uh, uh, for those that are active on site. Whereas uh, clerical type work, legislative work and so forth, or bankers, uh, they're, it's much, much lower, of course. Of course. And, and if, if a company does elect to go into late duty, um, that could result in a reduced premium and the worker gets to get, go back to work faster, but not at full, uh, I guess, full duties. It's just a, a lighter duty and they do a little different type of work. Yeah, well, my understanding of that, and maybe Matt could uh, uh, add something to this, is that if you file a work comp claim uh, as an employer, that you've got a three-year experience modification. That is, any money you that is spent on that claim will then be charged back to you, at least at some percent of it, and it will affect mm -hmm. your premium in an upward fashion for a period of three years. Is, mm -hmm. that, is that your understanding, Matt? I'm, I'm not I'm, sure. I, I'm, uh, yeah. And so in that way, yes, it does. Uh, it, uh, any, any, anything you can save as an employer on that claim will help you in not having to pay as high of a premium mm -hmm down the road for three years. And so by getting the employee back to work, that you don't have to pay for them to stay home, they can actually be doing and contributing a little bit at the job. Yes, the employer continues to pay them at their usual rate. Mm -hmm. So that, that gets the insurance folks off the hook for paying their indemnity or their lost wages. Mm -hmm. It's called mm -hmm. temporary total disability. Mm -hmm. And that is up to, it's up to $2,500 per month at caps out. Wow. So if you're in a higher paid trade, uh, the, uh, oftentimes they're you know, there's no, there's no financial incentive for staying off work right. on a work comp injury. Right, right, right. And that, that's changed somewhat in, uh, over the years as well. Right. So what other benefits are there to getting back to work sooner? Um, okay, so there might be some dollar savings, but there's got to be some emotional satisfaction to the employee, and, and maybe even that could help healing process. Absolutely. The, uh, the best study I've ever seen, and this was, was Safeway that, that did this study a couple of decades ago, is if, if one of their employees went out on an injury and couldn't come back to work because of their impairment that they had, if the Safeway management or human resources just called every other day to say, how are you doing? How are you doing? We miss you. We miss you at work. Uh, that the recovery rate was significantly better. Wow. And the, the, the pain didn't, it actually reduced the patient's pain to know that somebody would call and care. So a little Isn't bit that of, fascinating? A little bit of empathy goes a long way. Absolutely. And what, is it, what, what does it cost Safeway? Well, the time for someone to pick up the phone. Which but, is what, 60 seconds? Well, <laughs> there's a cost to everything in business, uh, but I, I think it is a good return on that one. Yeah, and, uh, I don't think so. And so we, uh, we're very much encouraged that for all, all of the doctors that I associate with, as well as the doctors who are in the relatively new Work Injury Medical as Association of Hawaii, WEMA, which we formed as a group of doctors trying to get everybody on board with best practices and to try to further efficientize the delivery of care. And how long has that organization been uh, trying to? I think it's just about four years now. Four years, mm -hmm. making progress? Well, we're, we're, I think we're having an impact. Uh, we just had a, a wonderful seminar Carl, that we uh, hosted and put together called Work Comp 101, mm -hmm. where we invited uh, regulators, legislators, uh, insurance folks, as well as doctors and therapists to all come together and to start discussing and airing, you know, our number one, two, and three heartburns uh, in terms of what, what we, as different share or stakeholders in the system, uh, ha have to wrestle with all the time. And our, 
our hopes is that by encouraging that dialogue and and not just not just coming together to talk but also to listen that we can we can find some good win-win solutions to the problems that are still plaguing us. But just getting the discussion going is half the battle. You know, that, that's it's good to be having these kind of talks. I, I think so. Yeah. I think, yeah. Now, Matt, I wanted to ask you. There's um, you you kind of keep your eye on the legislation that's going on. I guess that's kind of like your Kuliana. Um, how is things looking for this session? Anything going on that we should be aware of? At the beginning of the session, there were about thirty workers' comp bills that wow. we were keeping our Hawkeye eagle eye on. Um, that's been pared down to about three to five, so mm -hmm. it's been significantly reduced. I think the most important ones that uh, are still alive are, one, um, trying to make the IME process a little bit more transparent. And IME I, is the independent medical exam okay, in the workers' comp pro uh, process. And all this bill, originally, it was to try and make sure that the doctor that's doing the IME is held to the same standard that he or she would have to a normal patient. That mm. part got taken out of the bill, and what's left in the bill now is to allow the injured worker to bring in a chaperone and to be able to uh, record the IME exam if the IME physician allows that. So that's what's left. and it's. Mm. It's a, it's a good first step forward. You know, every um, 30,000 mile journey uh, starts with a first step and uh, we're hopeful that's gonna pass. Uh, there's another measure that is, it was aimed at this tactic called deny pending investigation, mm -hmm. but uh, mm -hmm. unfortunately it doesn't look like that measure is gonna pass. Hmm. I guess it, it's nice to be making these steps but if the steps don't happen often enough and quick enough, it could take a long time to, it, it, to travel what, this journey. Uh, Dr. Scotty <laughs> mentioned is that we're still on a paper system, and, and um, I'm yes. at least uh, I'm, I'm glad that the Department of Labor is pushing to try and modernize it. But we passed a bill last session that allows physicians to fax the uh, workers' comp treatment plan. Fax it's. 20 freaking 17. Am I allowed to say freaking? <laughs> Do they make facts? Well, facts. <laughs> First of all, you got to explain to me, what's a fax? <laughs> yeah, <there you laughs> know. Know. We, we try to uh, have the bill include emails, but we were told that the system wouldn't accommodate emails in this age. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. there, there's a lot of negative inertia built into the system uh, for, for a number of reasons. Uh, back to the IME situation, uh, what we're trying to do is get rid of the extreme IME opinion that is anti-patient, mm -hmm. although it might have an immediate effect of allowing an insurer to cut off care if, it, if it's done in a draconian enough fashion. Some are. By the way, they fly in some people from the mainland that aren't even part of this medical who, community. Who is this? Who, who chooses the IME? The, the insurance folks. And they, and they have a bias in, in what type of outcome they want from this. Well, right? they, have, they absolutely do, unfortunately. If, uh, if you come at a case with an assumption that somebody should be better and aren't, or that they're not trying, or the doctor's doing something wrong, uh, you're, you're going to seek out, I guess, an opinion that reinforces that. That's a Captain uh, Obvious statement, by the yeah, way. Yeah, it is. It's a rhetorical <laughs> question, but I, I'm happy to answer it. I, what we're after is uh, are people that do fair, a fair professional job that keep a case from turning into a train wreck. Because once, uh, if, if real pathology is denied or ignored, and care is cut off, that pathology won't go away. Mm. It'll, it'll bubble around the system. You, the patient will then have to go to a hearing. You know, whether they win or, or if they lose, they might go to an appeal. And yet this process can take anywhere from a few months to a few years, actually. And it could get worse, couldn't it? Of course, of course. Disease not, print, not uh, treated uh, correctly and interventions that don't happen can lead to other, what we call comorbidities or just worsening of the problem. Mm -hmm. Uh, some of these cases, if we could have gotten surgery to them quickly and repaired the torn meniscus or the torn disc or, or whatever, uh, we could have had the patient back to work, actually, in a functional capacity. And, that, and that's, we've got to keep in mind, that's the goal. We want to we keep the patient moving to the system. Uh, it is called workers' compensation. You know, it's, for, it's there to protect the worker, to keep them from falling into destitution. Uh, these are these are these are really solid citizens in Hawaii that this happens to. They can lose their house, they can lose their wife or husband, 
and their, their lives really can come unraveled if, if that safety net called work comp is not there for them. And need I remind everyone about our growing homeless problem? I was just going to say, this could actually be adding to that homeless and, issue. And in my opinion, and I know Matt, Matt's probably got an opinion on this, I don't think we're paying enough attention uh, as to where all these homeless come from originally. Mm -hmm. And because it, there had to have been a breakdown in the, our social safety net that at least started these folks down the road to a life of chronic pain, uh, 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 drug abuse, and on to you know what desperate people do, which is dishonest things and, and burglary and even mm -hmm. violence. So, so re really, uh, that's one thing that I'm uh, feel do feel very passionately about is we've got to make sure that the work comp system is working for the people of Hawaii. We don't have the luxury of not getting folks back into a productive mode. We don't have a state next to us. We can bus in more workers. No, we're kind uh, of lonely is, out here. Oh, yeah, there's yeah. nothing yes. new about that story, mm -hmm. by the way. We are, we're all we got. So let's take care of our own. We can do it. We have the technology. But what's, la what's lacking, in my opinion, is more cooperation to get the job done right with less conflict and fighting and more focusing on the outcome. So what we need to do is just keep the awareness out there. We've got some organizations that's, uh, that's doing this. Uh, maybe we need to have more of these type of discussions going forward. Um, but unfortunately, believe it or not, we've kind of run out of time. Uh, Matt, any closing comments you'd like to make before we wrap up? Just that the true measure of any society is how it treats its most vulnerable members. And injured workers are clearly high on that list of vulnerable members. So let's, let's do the right thing, folks. Let's get in the canoe and let's all paddle in the same direction. Right. No, that's good. Any final comments? Oh, well, just uh, to reiterate uh, what Matt just said, uh, we have an ability to fix this. I want to reassure uh, insurers that might be watching this or employers that we are, we are very cognizant that you guys are paying the bill and, and have to make ends meet. And we're, we're happy to be partners in that. Uh, all we're asking for is for you to listen to our reports from the front line because we're down on the front line doing the heavy lifting and, uh, and listen and, and, and help support some of the solutions that we are proposing. All right, very good. Well, I appreciate you both having the time to, to visit with us today. Thank uh, you. We had some really good information uh, that was disseminated about workers' comp. But this is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We broadcast live every Thursday from 2 to 2.30. Uh, we highlight successful businesses and individuals and, and share information that might be useful to them as they manage and run their own businesses. So from uh, ThinkTech Hawaii and the studios in the Pioneer Plaza, until next week, aloha. <laughs>